I just want you to take a couple of seconds before I start. And I just want you to think about the love of Jesus. I want you to think about how even in your worst moments, God was right there. I want you to think about the very last time when you thought you weren't going to be able to make it out of the situation. And somehow, in some way, God worked it out for you. And you're here today and you have the victory over that last circumstance. Why? Because of the love of the Father. He's overwhelmed his love upon you. He has overwhelming love for you, unconditional love for you, undying love for you. So on today, I want us to grasp the gravity of that kind of love. We don't fully get it because the love other people show us is not the love that God gives us. So we, base ju we judge God's love based on people's love, but we cannot do that because God's love is unconditional. God's love doesn't stop because I don't measure up. God's love doesn't stop because I didn't meet a criteria. God's love doesn't stop because I didn't do this or didn't do that, or I fell short on this, or I fell short on that. His love never stops, it's unending. So I want us to grasp the, that, that no matter what you've done, no matter what you do, no matter where you've been, God will never reject you. He is a God that accepts you. He accepts you and he loves you and he's pouring out his love on you. So I want you to feel overwhelmed. I want you to know his love wants you to be overjoyed. I want you to know his love wants you to be overcome. Be overcome by the love of God. Be overcome by the acceptance of God today. That's my prayer for you, that you would be overcome by his acceptance today. Welcome, New Wine. I'm glad. I'm grateful. I'm amazed. I'm honored to be before you today. I'm honored that the Lord, the Lord chose me to be his vessel to use. I'm honored that the Lord chooses each one of us to be the vessel he chooses to use for his glory. On today, I want to get right into the word. And if you can, turn with me in your Bibles. We're going to go to the book of 2 Kings. And we're going to be reading uh, chapter 7. And we're going to start at verse 3. And um, I'm going to be asking some questions. So we are going to interact. So when I let you know to unmute your phones, you can do that. We are an interactive group. We like to do that. And so I'm going to be asking some questions today. Today is going to be some thoughts that you're going to have to think about, some things that's going to have to really sit in your mind for a moment and cause you to say, hmm, God, that's what he's doing today. So we want to go to 2 Kings. We're going to be in chapter 7, and we're going to start at verse 3. And the scripture says, now there were four men with leprosy sitting at the entrance of the city gates. And they said, why should we sit here waiting to die? They asked each other, we will starve if we stay here, but with the famine in the city, we will starve if we go back there. So we might as well go out and surrender to the Aramean army. If they let us live, so much the better. But if they kill us, we would have died anyway. So my message today <laughs> is from rejected to accepted. This is the scripture the Lord gave me. And I want to pull some things out of this scripture. And I want you to go ahead and unmute your phones because I'm about to ask a question. And the scripture starts out by saying there were four men with leprosy and they were sitting at the entrance of the city gates. And so my first question to you, cause we've dealt with this thing about leprosy before I've preached on it. You guys were like, oh my God, she's giving gory details about this leprosy. Well, today I'm not gonna describe it cause y'all was like, just all messed up when I tried to give the description before you was like, oh God, don't do that again. <laughs> so I'm not gonna do that to you today, but I am asking the question, why were they sitting at the entrance of the city and not inside the city? So whoever wants to answer, I'd like to hear that now. We can't hear you. You can unmute your phones.
Well, the reason was because there were leprosies. And when you, you got leprosy, people rejected right away. You, you shouldn't be there. They have their own camp for the people that have leprosy. They have their own camp. They're not even allowed in this city at all. They're not part of the city anymore because they're so sick. Right. So they were isolated. And if we had to take it from our day and time, it would be like last May when people were getting COVID. And how did people treat people with COVID? What would happen if you were in a grocery store and somebody started calling? <coughs> that would cause pandemonium. And people were looking at you, throwing daggers at you with their eyes. Like, if you don't get your sick selves out of this line and away from me, we're going to have a ruckus in here, right? I had people coming into my job because I work in healthcare. And we had patients coming in that had COPD. And with COPD, that's a breathing issue that people have that they literally cannot breathe and they have to be on oxygen. So they cough. And people will come in on oxygen and patients are looking at them with daggers. Like if you don't get your coughing self out of here. And I'm like, they don't have COVID. They got COPD. Can you let the people breathe? Because you don't understand their challenge to breathe is serious. And I'm just looking at people and the hateful rejection that they gave other people because they were sickly. But COVID brought fear. And that fear brought an incited rejection. And so today we're talking about these four lepers and all four of them were leprous. And because of the leprosy, it caused them to be isolated and rejected from being around the other people in their community. They couldn't be around family. They couldn't be around friends. They had their own colonies. They literally had groups, like Pastor Angel said, that were set aside just for lepers. They could not be around the general population. And that's how we treated people with COVID. It was like, you got COVID? Dude, you better not come to my house. I mean, I saw stuff that I never thought I would see. I literally saw husbands and wives that were married 40 something years. And the wife was like, Negro, excuse my French. You better not even think about coming close to me. Locked them in a room and was like, I'll put your food at the door. Don't come out the room. You hear, here's, a, here's a little pan to pee in. I mean, it was serious and I'm thinking, Ain't no way in the world if my loved one got COVID that I'm going to do that. I'm like, if Morgan got COVID, I'm getting COVID because ain't no way I'm going to separate myself from my own child. And I had coworkers and people that I know from the job that literally did not see their children for nine to 10 months because of COVID. And I'm thinking that's outlandish to me. Because if it means that I got to get sick so that I can have my loved one close, then so be it. I don't care what it costs me. I'm not going to reject you because you're sickly. But that's what happened to these four men. They were rejected because of the sickness and the disease that they had, right? So the scripture goes on to say, I got another question coming up. Be ready. I'm just saying. So the scripture says, the men said, why should we sit here waiting to die? Now, what would cause them to think they were going to die. So that's my question. We talked about leprosy before. So I wanna hear what your thought process is. What would cause them to think that they were sitting there waiting to die? <laughs> because they had no, they had leprosy, which is fatal. Then you add on top of that, the circumstances that the community was in that they weren't even allowed to go in anyway. So they were going to either die of leprosy or they were going to starve to death. Amen. Thank you, Brandon. I love that guy. Um, so okay. yes, I go ahead. There was no cure as well. Yes. There was really no cure unless it was Jesus Christ. So other than that, mm -hmm. there was really no cure at that point. And we're talking about second and king, so. Amen. And at that time, Christ had not come into the world yet. So during that time, they literally had no physical person that could heal them or cure them. Leprosy at that time was incurable. They did not have a cure for it. Same way with COVID. We have a vaccine now that still is not a cure. And people that take the vaccine can still get COVID. So even though they're telling people it's not true, it is true. I know patients that have gotten COVID after the vaccine. 
So we don't have a cure other than Christ. He is the cure. And in those days, they did not have a cure for leprosy. And so if a person got leprosy, either God miraculously, some kind of way, they had this pool where people could go and, and, and they could be healed by the waters being troubled. They had the Jordan River and certain miracles happened in certain places. They had prophets and those prophets would come and they would perform miracles. But other than that, there was no cure for leprosy. So it was fatal. So these men knew our destiny, if we stay here, is going to be to die not even just from leprosy, but also because there was famine in the land and everybody was starving, including them. So they said to themselves, they said, we will starve if we stay here with the famine in the city. And it said, but we will starve if we go back there. So if we stay here, we starve. If we go back there, we starve. So either way, we're going to starve. So they said to themselves, so we might as well go and surrender to the Aramean army. If they let us live, we'll be good. But even if they kill us, it's okay because we're already dying. So sometimes the Lord puts us in a situation where we have to make a decision, where we have to choose to move forward where we have to choose to pursue our purpose. And we can't just stay stuck. We can't just stay seated in a place of giving up because we've been rejected. We can't stay seated in a place of just accepting death because other people pronounce death on us, right? Death was a, a, a pronounced prescription for them. That was the only thing that people could say to them. You're a leper, you're gonna die. There was no other option for them. So, I mean, literally, that's how people looked at them. Don't come around me. You're a leper. It's contagious. I don't want it. Go outside the camp. It literally was spiritual. In the book of, of Leviticus, it talks about how the priest would have to pronounce a person that was a leper. They would look at their body. They would look at their scars. They would look at the spots. And that determined if you had leprosy. And if you had leprosy, they determined the severity of your leprosy. Because some leprosy wasn't as severe as others. If you had just one spot, it may not spread. If you had several spots and it was turned white, it was going to spread. You were going to be isolated. So I want you to understand that the severity of their leprosy determined the level of rejection they received from the people. It's deep, but it's true. And so some of us have experienced being rejected it may not have been because of sickness. It could have been because you didn't look like somebody else. It could have been because you didn't sound like somebody else. It could have been just simply because you're different. It could have been because of your religious beliefs. It could have been because of your natural um, physical attributes. You people, people have rejected me because I'm overweight. I've gone into stores and people in the store rejected me. You can't fit nothing in here. Why are you in here? People have been rejected because they were too skinny. So there's a lot of different reasons why people reject us. People reject us because we don't have the right skin color. People reject us because our hair type is different. Your hair is nappy and my hair is straight. I've heard that so many times. You got nappy hair, I got good hair. It's sad, but it's true. We're rejected for so many reasons. Men are rejected because they're bald or they have lots of hair. They're rejected if they're too short or if they're too tall. So our physical attributes can cause us to be rejected by people. It's sad, but it's true. And so these lepers were rejected. They were rejected because they had an illness. They were rejected because they had a disease. And instead of them being loved and being cared for, they were kicked out. They were tossed aside. They were told to go somewhere else where people couldn't get it. And the thing is, we couldn't blame the people because they were just really trying to protect everybody else. But how did that make the lepers feel? I want to go into this story a little bit. And I want to say to you, they asked the question. They said, why should we sit here waiting to die? And so the question I'm posing to you, what areas are you sitting in and instead of moving forward, you've decided to stay stuck because of rejection, because somebody said you couldn't, because somebody told you you'll never be nothing, because somebody said you're this or you're that, because a parent crushed you as a child. I understand it. I've been there. But how many of us stay stuck believing the lie of the rejection instead of moving forward? 
These men had a decision to make the same way we have a decision to make. They said, if we stay here, we'll die. If we go back to where we came from, we'll die. So if we go back to rejection, we'll die. If we stay stuck in rejection, we'll die. The only choice is we've got to move forward. We've got to move past what we've been through. And we have to pursue something that's scary, but it's different, but it's going to push us to purpose. And that's what these four men did. And so they asked an important question that was necessary to ask. Why should we stay here and die? And they realized if we stay here, nothing good is gonna come from us sitting here. We've sat here all this time and it hasn't helped us one bit, not one bit. There's areas where you've been stuck and it hasn't helped you. You've been doing the same things the same way. I've been doing the same things the same way. And there's some cycles in our lives that we've perpetuated that have not helped us. And we've stayed stuck because of rejection. And these men realized they needed to make a decision about their lives. They said, we should just go and surrender to the Aramean army. And if they let us live, we will be better off as slaves and not starving. We'll be better off because at least we can live there without slaves. I mean, as slaves, at least we can live there and be in a jail, but yet eat. At least we can be there and they're not gonna isolate from us because they don't even understand our condition. See, the Jews understood leprosy, but other places didn't understand that leprosy like, like they did. God specifically shared with them what leprosy was. So they knew if we go to this other place, they're not going to treat us the way our own people are treating us. So they said, at least we can be slaves and not starve. But if they kill us, we were going to die anyway. So what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Our, our time is short anyway. We're lepers. We know that it's only a short period of time that we have before something fatal happens to our lives. So at least we can pursue something greater than what we're doing now. And the scripture says, and I want to go back to the word. I'm in verse five. It says, so at twilight, they set out for the camp of the Arameans. But when the camp, but when they came to the edge of the camp, no one was there. And I want you to hear this next text, this next part of the scripture in verse six. For the Lord had caused the Aramean army to hear the clatter of speeding chariots and the galloping of horses and the sound of a great army approaching. The king of Israel was hired, um, the, the Hittites and the Egyptians, and he said, they're here to attack us. And they cried out to one another in panic and they began to run into the night. And the scripture says they abandoned their tents, their horses, their donkeys and everything else and fled for their lives. Now, how amazing is it that four lepers with no horses, <laughs> no chariots, no nothing. They had nothing. They're lepers. They don't even have no money. They had nothing coming to this camp caused the people to hear a sound. And the scripture says the Lord caused them to hear something. So I want you to see something here that they were desiring to get something to eat. They were desiring to be fed. They were desiring not to have to starve at the city gates. And when they got to the edge of the city, the Lord cleared out the people that were there just for them. So I wanna start by saying, God has accepted you even though people rejected you. He accepted these lepers. He accepted them so much that he's cleared out the people there that probably would have killed them, that probably would have enslaved them. He cleared the people out, made a way for them to go in and get their needs met. So no matter what you're facing right now, the accepted one has accepted you and you are loved, and God is going to meet every one of your needs. No matter who said you're not going to have it, no matter who said you can't, no matter who said you won't, no matter who said you'll never be good enough, God says you're accepted by me, and I'm going to make a way for you where nobody else could have made a way. And so these, these lepers went into the camp, and the scripture says here, I want to read this to you because I thought it was so powerful. I want to read from... Um, Verse eight, 
It says, when the men with leprosy arrived at the edge of the camp, they went into one tent after another, eating and drinking wine, and they carried off silver and gold, clothings and hid it. Finally, they said to each other, this is not right. Hold on, this, this thing bless my socks off. They said, this is not right. I want you to hear the word of the Lord because these men, as sickly as they were, as rejected as they had been, they thought about something that only God could have instilled in them. And they said, this is not right. This is a day of good news and we aren't sharing it with anyone. We're over here eating good. We're over here drinking wine. We're over here getting gold and silver. We're over here lavished up with the blessings of the Lord and we're keeping it and hiding it just for ourselves. And they said, we aren't sharing this with anybody. And it says, if we wait until morning, some calamity will certainly fall upon us. They were convicted in their hearts. And they said, if we wait and don't tell nobody, if we keep this all to ourselves and don't share. Pastor Angel was talking about it when he did offering. He said, give and it'll be given back to you. These men had an understanding that we cannot keep this all to ourselves. We've got to share it. And they said, something bad will come upon us if we don't do this. Then they said to themselves, come on, let's go back and tell the people at the palace. Now, I want to deal with some things in this text that bless my soul. First of all, the scripture says at twilight, they all set out for the camp at twilight. So they chose a specific time of the day where the sun was going down, where I don't know if you guys have ever seen twilight, but that's the time of the day when the sky looks orange and it's so pretty. And you're looking like, wow, God, look at the sky and how beautiful it is. Well, this was the time of the day that they had set out to go on a journey to another place where they didn't know what was going to befall them when they got there. But what I love about the text is I want you to see something amazing about these lepers. The scripture said they were hungry. They were rejects. They were outcasts. They had a terrible disease, which was a plague. They were isolated from family, community, and friends. They were in the worst place in their lives. <laughs> Yet, in spite of all this, they were unified. The scripture not one time says, one of them said, we're not going with you. We're not going. We're going to sit right here. We're going to die right here. We're going to just wait. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. And we're going to wait on the Lord. You know how we do. We're going to wait on God. We're not going to move. We're just going to wait on God. Meanwhile, God is waiting on us. But they did not get divided. There was no division among these four lepers. Every one of them agreed, we're going to go together. And if we die, we die. So unity was the first thing I want you to see was a blessing for them. Because although each one of them had been rejected by friends, family, community, they all had one another. And they said, if we're going to die, we're going to die together. The same way we sat together, we're going to journey together. And so they set out for the journey of a lifetime that was not just going to bless them, but it was going to bless everybody associated to them, even those that rejected them. So I want you to understand something about them. They were amazing people. Although they were sickly, although they had a disease, they had a heart for God's people. And after they set out for this journey, not one of them was left behind to die. Not one of them disagreed with the decision. Not one of them said, we shouldn't go. We need to die here. Not one of them said, uh-uh, let me just go by myself and see what happens and I'll come back and tell you. No, not one of them said that. They all said, we're going to go together. And when they got there, the camp was empty, but everything they needed had been left behind. That's just like God. Everything you need, he's going to leave behind for you. He's going to scare your enemy out and leave the spoils behind. Jesus, he's so good. I, I mean, I'm telling you right now, whatever you stand in need of, just know God will supply. He supplied for these lepers. He supplied for them. And, and I want you to understand that he scared everybody off. The mighty army of the Arameans, he scared them off. And they realized 
that we cannot just enjoy this blessing by ourselves. We have to share this with the other people. We got to share this with the people in town that are starving. They decided to share it. They didn't take on the wrong attitude like some of us would have taken on. Some of us would have said, forget them. They didn't think about me. They threw me outside the camp. They told me I'm a leper and I can't be, they can't be bothered with my sickness and they don't want my nasty self around them. That's what we would have said. We would have said, forget it. They rejected me. I'm rejecting them. Oh, well. But these lepers didn't take on that thought process. These lepers said, I got to bless them. Even though they did wrong to me, I've got to bless them. And I want to ask you a question. If you were the lepers, how would you have handled that situation? Now you got gold, you got silver, you got all these different things. How would you have handled that situation? Would you have done what they did? Or would you have done the opposite and rejected others because they rejected you? I want to point out something. Rejection a lot of times breeds rejection. So those of us that were rejected as children, and I was, I came from a dysfunctional family and I was rejected as a child. As an adult, I took on rejection because I didn't wanna experience the same hurt that I received in the past. So instead of allowing myself to be rejected again, I started doing the rejecting. I said, instead of you cutting me off, I'm just gonna stop talking to you and not allow you to do to me what other people have done to me because this was a pattern of people leaving me and not being committed. So instead of going through that again, I'm just not gonna get that close to you. And if I don't get that close to you, you can't reject me. That wasn't true, but that's what the enemy tried to tell me. So I want you to know sometimes rejected people reject people. But God wants us to know that we've been accepted by him. We've been accepted by Christ. We've been accepted into his family. Nobody can reject us when God accepts us. Even when they do, we have to remember that the one who created everything, he loves us more than we can love ourselves. And we're never rejected by him. I want you to ask yourself, are you the rejected or are you the one that's rejected others or both? In my case, it was both. It was both. I was rejected and I've rejected others. This week, God revealed so much to me in this text. I had to call people even this morning. I had to call my brother and apologize. I didn't even realize I was rejecting my brother. And the Lord spoke to me this morning. He said, your brother called you many times. And many a times you looked at the phone and you're like, okay, I can't talk to him right now. Not because I don't want to. I just don't have time. My brother's a long, he's long-winded like me. And he's a talker. And I can't just get on the phone with him and get right off. And if I have something to do, my brother's going to say, okay, I understand you got something to do. But sis, blah, blah. And he's going to keep talking. Like, you can't just get off the phone. And I'm like, bro, I got to go. And he's like, I know, but I didn't get to talk to you last week. So keep, and he'll keep going. And so because I knew I couldn't spend the time with him needed, I rejected him. And I didn't realize it was rejection, but the Holy Spirit really hit me today with that. And he said, you gotta call him, you gotta make this right. And I called him and I apologized to him. And my brother started weeping on the phone. And I was like, he's crying over this. Like that hit me because I really didn't think it was a big thing, but to him, it was, and it was heavy on his heart, and he never fully expressed it to me, but God healed him this morning by me just apologizing and saying, I'm sorry, I rejected you by not taking your phone calls, and so today I want to apologize to each one of you if I've done that to you, if I've offended you in any way, if I've done anything to you that made you feel rejected, I apologize. Because I never want to reject anybody because I know what it feels like to be rejected. So I apologize for that. I just needed to, to go into that little area because it was really important. And I want to get back to the story. And I want you to understand that even though these men had been rejected, that did not stop them from doing what God wanted them to do. We cannot allow the rejection that we face from others cause us to go into a place where we reject others. God wants to heal us from that. And even if we've done that, you can do like I did and make it right. Go apologize. The Lord spoke a word to me even about rejection. He said, listen, admittance is a repentance because sometimes we can admit we're wrong, but we don't repent. Repent means to change our mind toward it. It means to turn away from. We can admit it and not repent from it. 
So I said, Lord, I don't want to just, I don't want it to be admittance, but not repentance. I don't want to admit I'm wrong, but never do nothing about being wrong. So today my desire is that we would all repent, not just admit, but repent and turn away from. So that's my desire here. And that's what happened with them. They realized we're wrong for this. We're wrong for just ex being excited and enjoying this all by ourselves and not telling a single soul. They said, we're wrong for this. And they said, we got to go back and tell the people. And I want you to understand, we have a choice to allow rejection to make us bitter or better. Which one will we allow? Will it make us bitter or will it make us better? These lepers allowed rejection to make them better. They didn't return evil for evil. What has rejection done in your heart? What did rejection do to you? What has it caused you to do? What person has it created you to be? Because it can create something good or something wrong. It can create us to be better or to be bitter. We can take that rejection and say, I'm never going to do what somebody did to me. Or we can take it and say, forget that. You hurt me. I'm going to hurt you because hurt people hurt people. And so we can internalize that thing and turn it into something negative or turn it into something positive. And these men decided to do something positive. Even though you've been rejected, you're accepted by God. So even though people reject you, you don't need to return that rejection. God didn't return that rejection to us, even though we rejected God. There were times in our lives where we rejected God. Even now, God says, do something. And we'd be sitting there like, God, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that, Jesus. Can you just get somebody else? Can you ask somebody else? Can, can it not be me? I don't want to do that today. Please, Jesus, just don't use me. Sometimes we reject God. And we don't realize that we've rejected God. But even in our rejection toward him, he never rejects us back. And so we have to take that example from the Lord. That even though people reject you, you can't reject them back. I look at Joseph and Joseph was put into a pit by his brothers, left to die. They didn't even come back to rescue him. But in spite of all of that, Joseph said, in the midst of famine, I'm going to feed my brothers, even though they left me to die. So I want you to ask yourself, which one are you? Are you the rejected? Are you the one that's rejected others? Or are you both? This is a question that's between you and the Lord. You got to think about this thing. And these lepers, even when they went back, they didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't know if the people were even going to listen. They didn't know if the king was going to reject them. They didn't know what was going to happen. And the scripture says when they went back, they listened to them, but the king didn't even believe it. The king said the people are still there and they're hiding outside waiting to ambush us. When the lepers had already told them, everybody cleared out, everything's left behind, all that you need is there, all the food that you need is there, everything. The prophet had even told them that this was going to happen, but the king, he didn't believe it. He was like, no, I'm going to send spies because I don't believe it. How long did he prolong people starving because of his unbelief of these lepers? People have hindered themselves of being healed because they didn't believe you were the healer. They rejected you and didn't receive what they needed from you because they didn't understand who God put, what God put in you. They didn't know who you were and whose you were. And so even though they rejected you, God accepted you. God calls you his beloved. God says you're mine. God says you're a royal priesthood. God says you are amazing. God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I created you in my image and in my likeness. So no matter who says you're not, I say you are. No matter who says you can't, I've placed in you the ability that you can. So I want you to know that even in their desperate situation, these lepers did not allow rejection to not allow them to do the will of the Lord. They did God's will in spite of the insurmountable odds against them. They did God's will. Are we willing to overcome the rejection and allow God's acceptance to overtake us? I had to deal with that all week. God don't have us preach no message that we don't live. And I'm walking this out. I'm in the process of this journey. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm an authority. I'm going to sit here and tell you I'm walking this out every day. This week, the Holy Spirit had to talk to me. He had to show me that I've loved everybody else but didn't love me. I don't know how many of you are in that boat. How many of you have been there that you give everything away? 
but you don't give yourself enough love. You don't nurture your body, but you'll pray for everybody else's body. You don't take care of your health, but you'll tell other people about their health. God has to deal with us. He had to tell me, we can't fake it. We got to face it. And so this week I had to start falling in love with me. And I'm telling you, you got to start falling in love with you because sometimes rejection causes us to dislike ourselves. We believe the lies of the enemy that were spoken to us. We believe the lies of loved ones that said this or that. We believe the lies of parents that told us we'll never be anything. I believe the lie. You might have believed the lie. It might have been a leader that said that to you. It could have been a spiritual person, a pastor or an elder, or somebody in the church that said something to you, and that thing crushed you. I remember when a leader in my church, my pastor's wife, called me a false prophet because I prophesied something that was so accurate that she freaked out. And after that, she stood me up before the congregation and called me a false prophet in front of everybody. I was devastated, crushed, and wanted to walk away. I don't know what you've been through. But I'm sure some of you maybe have been through worse than that. Regardless to how they rejected you, God has accepted you. And it was not the love of God that treated you that way. That was people. And those same people probably were rejected. So they rejected you. And so I want us to understand that we need to get to the place where we get like the lepers and we say, Lord, no matter what, I won't reject others. I'm closing here, but I'm gonna turn this over to Apostle Liz. I want you to think about the areas that you've been rejected. I want you to think about the areas where you want God to heal you. I want you to think about the places that you've stayed in that same position and not move forward because rejection hindered you. I want you to think about the places that you've gone back to rejection when you should have moved forward. Because see, these lepers had a decision. Either they could stay still, go back to where they left, or move forward. We got the same decision to make. Stay still, go backwards, or move forward. And the Lord is saying today, we've got to move forward. We've got to pursue purpose. We've got to come out of these places of rejection and allow uh, ourselves to see ourselves as the accepted of God. Apostle Liz. You. Oh my God, amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Because we know that we've gone from being rejected by man to, be, to knowing the truth that we're accepted by God. And so I want to pray for everybody. And I, I just want to pray for everybody because everybody has experienced rejection at some point. We receive, receive rejection from family, rejection from friends, rejection from church, rejection from lovers, rejection from enemies, rejection from schools and teachers, students. People in our lives, every single person has experienced some form of rejection. But when we look at this word and we see what they did, what do you do when you're rejected? You know, we as believers, every single one of us, I'm assuming is a believer here. We as believers, we walk differently. We can walk like these men and, and know that to them, we're like lepers and, and we have this sickness of Jesus because we're in love with Jesus. But we know that even while being rejected, we're not going to reject others. We're going to get into a place and a posture of unity and love. And we're going to let them, you know, come in and enjoy what God has given us. And we're not going to reject them. All right, well, we got this blessing. So now we remember that you rejected us last week. So now we're not going to bless you with it. We're going to do what God tells us, no matter who rejects us. And that's what I received from the message. And I just want to, um, pray for you guys. I had received some stuff from the Lord in reference to, to rejection, but I really didn't want to take away from the message. This message is clear. It's what we do when, when we're rejected by others. It matters. You know, are we going to take offense or are we going to stand in a posture of love? Are we going to stand in a posture of knowing that we're accepted by God? So I'm going to pray for all of us. Father, we come before you and we bless you. We honor you. 
we thank you for the privilege that it is to hear your word and not only be hearers of your word, but be doers of your word. We receive every single word and every single rejection we have received, rejection for being female or rejection for being a boy, rejection for being too tall or too short or being fat or being skinny, rejection for our language, rejection for anything that people have put paradigms and religion and things that, that sh we should fall into, but it doesn't fall into your grace. It doesn't fall into your acceptance. It doesn't fall into your mercy, Father God, that right now, every single rejection that we have faced in our lives, every root of bitterness in our lives and offense that has rooted itself in our memories, in our hearts, in our minds. I ask you to go into those areas, go into the mind of Jackie and, and Wani and, and Jen and the Jacksons and Brandon and Cecia and Rachel and her family and Catherine, all those who are on here and all those who will watch, Father God. I ask you to go into our memories and that we do not let that offend us. We do not let that hurt us. And that from this place of hurt, we don't hurt others. That this place of hurt does not produce an action of rejection towards others because we know how it feels to be rejected. Just as Jesus, you knew how it was to be rejected here on earth. So I ask you that you just fill us with your love, fill us with your peace, fill us with your acceptance that we know you have accepted us as sons and daughters, that you have accepted us as the bride. And right now, Every single portion of us that's healing from rejection, from pains, from trauma, that you just bring healing right now. Bring healing right now. Bring healing to our heart. Every emotion we feel when we think of those family members who rejected us, that we want to just retaliate, Father God. I just release the choice, the decision, the absolute mandate to forgive others. And that today we pick up the phone and we reconcile with our family members, that we pick up the phone or go visit family members and we bring acceptance and forgiveness to every single relationship, that you restore every single relationship that has been based on rejection, that we no longer reject others and retaliate based on how they treated us, that we continue to love the way you love, that we continue to go in, that we don't permit abuse, but we also don't let offense come in, Father God. I ask you to just minister to our hearts, minister to our minds, minister to our bodies, that we may be able to be ambassadors of your love, that just like the lepers, there will be no rejection that will keep us from doing your will. There will be no rejection that will keep us from the promises. There will be no rejection that will keep us from doing what you have asked us to do, that we will bless others unconditionally because we know the blesser has accepted us. We declare all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.